episode of the Ever Black Podcast is brought to you by Death Wish Hot Rods and Customs. Check out their Instagram for all their new t-shirts, caps, beanies, cups, and the all-new Atomic Death lineup. Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. I uh, sorry about before. We've got daylight say the whole daylight saving things throws everything out of whack. I'm sorry, mate. That's that's all right. We 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 figured it out. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. How are you going? I'm doing. I'm great. I'm super excited about coming to Australia next week uh, and uh, see all the fans and, and just have a good time. Oh, mate, it's 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 come quick. It's it's crept yeah. up. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's not this weekend, which is Halloween. It's the weekend after that. Are you? At least it, that's when that's when I'll be in in. You're in Brisbane, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Gold Coast. So I'm I'm okay. around the area. <laughs> <laughs> but that, but that's where you go to the to the show. Yes, I'll be there next weekend with bells on, mate. And there's a few people. If you, you know, I got some some mates of mine that are very very excited. You're going to be there. Okay. Expect- well, I'm glad. I I'm, I really had a good time. The I have not been back in I think over 20 years. Uh, it was one of the first supernovas. Uh, Daniel ran it then, and uh, he invited myself and. Arthur Adams and Joyce Chin, both of whom are going to be there this year as well. That's how I met Arthur and Joyce. We, we became great friends. Uh, and uh, But it, it was in Sydney. Uh, and then I, I know we went up to Queensland, um, but I'm not, no, it was just Sydney. That was the only part of it. Uh, but it was so beautiful and the people were so great and uh so i'm just looking forward to it looking forward to more yeah absolutely and you're doing adelaide as well so i yes. guess you've got a bit of time you're gonna are you gonna come down to the gold coast and go to the beach and hang about take a little bit we'll we'll, we'll see what happens I, the best part about it is i'm not a planner but joyce is so i'm sure that she'll have all sorts of things that we shenanigans that we can get into oh mate Lots of adventures, lots of adventures, yes. but mate, I, I, I've got to say that, uh, you know, so many projects over the years that have been massive for me personally and, and not just the DC Marvel stuff, but like going back to little Nev team wolf and commando, uh, Thank you. man, I, I, I was going to bring him down, but I've got my commando Arnie, my big one over there. <laughs> hey, if I could go back in time and tell him, I, uh, he would have just spun out, but such a massive body of work, mate. Like, I'm, I'm guessing that you get so much stuff over the table to sign. You know, that's that's the fun part. It it just depends on how people know me. I you know I was I was uh, talking the other day to somebody and they they said, uh, "Can you sort of tell us what your career's been?" And I said, "Well, we have to do it by decade. <laughs> we can't like it because it just was different." So I, I started. I was 23 years old uh, when we made Team Wolf and we made Commando. I had no idea. I got out of film school. I had no idea how lucky I was. Um, And I was so happy that, you know, fans to this day, like those films mean a lot to them. Like 1985 was a really special time to go to the movies. And this was before... I think they were VHS, but but not they were fairly expensive. And so people just went to the movies over and over again. And so like I've met people that have seen Commando like 20 times, uh, and or or Teen Wolf. Um, and then I, you know, I wrote movies for a long time, and then somewhere in the middle of that, I got a uh an offer to write The Flash as a movie. Mm. Um, and that they were hoping to do with Michael J. Fox. I'm not sure Michael ever knew that. I, I just they knew that we knew him, and so uh, and we worked on that for a while. But as you probably know, a lot of movies you work on and never get made. Um, it's funny that the Flash movie now has finally gotten made. Yeah. Um, and uh, 
so but while I was there, I I met the people at DC and they asked whether or not I'd like to write a comic book. And for me, that was like, you know, Santa coming by the house in July and going, well, I missed you at Christmas, but I got my uh, credit card. Let's go over to Toys R Us and buy whatever you want. And so I was like, sure. I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, I collected comics since I was a little kid, but I had no idea how to make them or write them. Uh, and it's through uh, the editor at the time was Barbara Randall. And she introduced me to this new guy that had never done superhero comics named Tim Sale. Oh. Uh, and that began a 30 year friendship of doing long Halloween and, and long Halloween, dark victory and long Halloween Catwoman went in Rome and, uh, and then all the color books we did, you know, uh, Daredevil Yellow and Spider-Man Blue and Hulk Gray and Cap White. Uh, and I was just really lucky that we got to do the Long Halloween special last year. Yeah. Because uh, that was the, that would be the last thing that Tim did. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, we lost him. Um, just Sorry. a great guy and a great friend and a tremendous talent. And could take my stories and just elevate them in a way that was just incredibly unique. Um, but, you know, I've, I've just been very lucky to work with people like Jim Lee on Hush and to work with Ed McGinnis on Red Hulk. And, you know, it's just been a great run and a lot of fun. Uh, but then back, I sort of left doing movies. Uh, I wound up working on, you know, some great shows and meeting extraordinarily talented people. I worked on Buffy uh with Joss I worked on uh Smallville with uh, Al Goff and Miles Miller that's 200 episodes of that show I, I was only there for three seasons uh I got to work on Lost and and work with Damon Lindelof who's just in my opinion probably the most talented guy out there right now yeah. and I know a lot of really talented guys um just Damon's in a sort of class by himself and uh and then I went on Heroes when it was good and left Heroes when it was bad. Um, so, you know, I, I'm with all the fans. I know exactly what happened. Uh, <laughs> I was there. We hit an iceberg. It just happens. Yeah. Uh, but a great cast and and really lovely people and, and met a lot of great writers on that show. Uh, and that's when I sort of thought I wanted to go make shows just for myself. Um, I'd worked with all these people and now it's time to do my own. And as it turned out, you know, Disney bought Marvel. And then I got a call from Marvel saying, do you want to run the television division? I didn't know when they said that, what they meant was we don't have a television division. Could you invent one? <laughs> uh, so, uh, and again, by the time we were done, 120 people working there, every one of them massively talented. Uh, and, you know, we wound up doing 14 shows, uh, you know, seven seasons of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, uh, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, The Punisher, oh. Defenders, Runaways, uh, you know, it just Cloak and Dagger. It just, we had Legion. We just had so much fun um, for the 10 years that I was there. And then... COVID came and, and, you know, I think Disney really liked the idea of the studio, which was making just hit after hit movie, uh, also running the television division. And I went back to what I thought I was going to do 10 years earlier, which was to go make shows for myself. So that's sort of the land that I'm in now. Um, but what's really been fun is that for the 10 years I worked for Marvel, I couldn't go out and do conventions it, because yeah. either I was working on the shows or when we did conventions, it was to promote the show. So I would go with the actors. I would go with the showrunners and I'd be out there just talking about that, but it wasn't really a chance to talk with my fans. Uh, and so it just, as soon as COVID ended and things started to wake up a little bit, I was in Boston. I just did New York. Um, and then uh, Daniel called and said, what's it going to take to get you to come back to Australia? And I said, asking. 
Uh, and uh, so we worked it out. And it's, uh, like I said, it was one of my favorite experiences 20 years ago. So being able to do it again, uh, I just can't wait to see new folks, folks that I saw back then. I mean, it was much smaller. It was a much smaller convention. Mm. When you started telling me that it was going to be like twenty to 40,000 people, I was like, Danny, what happened? He said, I, people figured it out. And uh, so I'm just, I'm so happy for his success and I'm happy to be part of that. And so it's just going to be fun. It is. And you know what? It's funny you mentioned that because I've, I've been going for 20 years. You know, I took my, my youngest, um, my, my well, my old now eldest daughter, I should say right. to when she was my youngest age. And uh, next week, I'm going to probably, he doesn't know <laughs> I'm taking him, but um, it's, I'm seeing families, I'm seeing everything, and I'm seeing it grown from being in a shed in Brisbane to being at the convention center, this massive thing. It's it's going to be incredible, because I know there's so many people that are excited, especially the Batman fans. <laughs> especially. Well, uh, I, listen, I'm, I whatever reason why you're coming, you know, I think that's the most fun, is that you know, there'll be people there that are, are Star Wars fans. There's people yeah. there that are going to be, uh, you know, television fans. There are going to be people there that are comic book fans. And so, but it, it's the one thing that I've always noticed at every convention. It's just a positive experience. Mm. It, it's like it's people sort of finding their own families again and their friends. And particularly after COVID, um, you know, for a lot of us, it's been a couple of years where we really haven't been able to to get out and see people in a large area. And, um, I, you know, everyone's just so excited and positive. And that's, to me, the most fun about it. Mate, well, going back to, uh, of course, Marvel, when you your time at Marvel, you, mate, you kicked down doors for pretty much, you. mate, like – in a big bad way where it self it helps set up a lot of things of the universe that seem to be swinging back around and moving forward like daredevil for example like yeah. now like uh, i could imagine though creatively it would have been amazing but on another whole other level it would have been a whole bunch of stress trying to juggle all of that and that responsibility was that was that what you went through at the time? Like, how? Well, it was. I, I don't know that stress is the right word. It was. I just felt a great responsibility to sort of borrow from Peter Parker, uh, and I, it was just. I I just wanted us all to make good shows. I didn't want uh, the fans to watch Marvel television and say, "Why isn't this as good as the movies?" Because the movies are amazing. Yeah. So it was, it was, it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't stress. It was just responsibility. It was recognizing that I wanted to make shows that I wanted to watch. Mm. Uh, and that, you know, I'd had, you know, incredibly good lessons from like Buffy and Smallville and, you know, and Lost. I mean, those are shows that will be on forever. Uh, and so, having that as sort of my training ground, you know, and then working with such talented showrunners and actors that, that just brought their a game. Like everybody was there to make sure that they were making the best show that they could. Now I'm not saying every show was perfect and every show was what everybody's taste is. Um, but you know, when you make 14 shows and you make 500 hours of television, you know, again, I was talking this the other day is it's I, when we hit 500, we suddenly turned to everybody and we went, do you realize we've just made 250 movies? Like it's it's it's, it's like because every two hours is a movie. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I think they've made something like 15, 20 movies and we've made 500 hours of television. Um, but they're catching up. I mean, I, you know, I see the all the different shows from, from Loki to She-Hulk. I mean, I, you know, they're out putting shows on Disney plus or whatever it is in Australia. Uh, and, uh, and good for them. Just as long as everybody's having a good time, that's all I really care about. And of course, I mean, you, you know, there's Marvel and DC that you've, yes. you've 
before. And uh, the, some of the most iconic stories, like Harsh and Long Halloween, man, like amazing. When it, when it comes to playing with these characters and and that universe, do you have do you have a preference? Which you know, Marvel or DC, or is it just much of a muchness? It it. Usually, I I get asked this a lot, which is sort of like you know, what's your favorite character? And I always have the same answer, which I think people are disappointed by, because uh, it sounds like sort of a cop out. But it's it's the character that I'm currently working on. So if I'm writing Batman and I'm thinking the Hulk is my favorite character, Batman's going to suffer because of that. So whenever I'm in it, I'm in it to win it for all intents and purposes. But I'm also, you know, I got asked once you know, who do I write my comics for? And the the interviewer was really surprised by my answer because so many writers say that they write for themselves uh, and that they expect the artist to sort of interpret what it is that they've given them. So it's sort of like they're the architect and then the artist is the builder. Mm. And I I didn't know any better. And so I came from a movie and television background so as a screenwriter you're always writing for the director you're writing for the star um and so i when i sit down to write batman the batman that i would write for tim sale and the batman that i would write for jim lee and the batman that i would write for ed mcginnis those are all very different kinds of batman and it, and i try to write to an artist's strengths you know an artist is working by himself in his studio and I want him to look at my pages every day and get excited about what they're going to draw and not like sit there and go, Oh, this guy, it's just like, he wants me to draw like two guys talking to each other for five pages. <laughs> um, and I, and believe me, I've, I've written those pages. So I know what that's like. Sometimes you got to do that in order to get yes. through the story. Um, but you know, I think the most important thing is to spend time talking to the artist, hearing what they love to draw, and trying to make that work. So it's sort of, and I'm the same way when I work with actors. It's like, what are the kinds of things? What's the role you want to play? You know, a lot of serious actors want to play comedy. A lot of serious actors know, do not give me comedy. That's a mistake. Uh, and I find that artists have a really good idea as to what they draw well. And I also want to give them an opportunity to draw something that, that when it's finished, that sometimes they want to keep the artwork and sometimes they want to sell the artwork. So I want to give them pages that, you know, that the audience, that the fans get really excited about. Um, and I, you know, I have my own personal wall of favorite pieces of art that uh, are all, and I only have things that are things that I've worked on because I, I as much as I love looking at other people's work, um, I don't feel the same kind of connection as I do to when I'm doing something that's, well, I remember when we worked on this and I remember when that page was finished and just being able to see that is just great fun. And in regards to working with Tim, when, rest in peace, I'm sorry about your loss, mate, but when was working with him and, you know, how would he influence your writing with his, his you know, with his drawing? You know, was that sort of, you know, you'd obviously inspire him to, you know, the pictures on the page, but how, how did he inspire you back? Uh, mostly it was, it was the, one of the joys about working with Tim was that it wasn't that he could draw anything. He could draw anything well. Mm. And so it didn't, It I never felt like, okay, I, I shouldn't set this in a kitchen or a diner or a place where there's a lot of people because some artists don't, That that's just too much work for them to be able, you have to remember you have a deadline. There's a reality to it. Yes. And there's a big joke, which is, the writer writes, you know, 10,000 Romans came over the hill and then he goes home <laughs> and, you know, and it's up to the artist to figure all of that out. And Tim was just, he was just really clear. Like whenever I would turn a script, he and I would then spend another three or four hours and he'd go through 
every single panel, every single page and go, so what are we trying? What's the most important thing on this page? What's the most important emotion that you want to get through? Um, how, you know, I, I feel like I can do this in less panels. I feel like I can do this in more panels. Um, I sort of feel like this should be bigger than what you've given me. Is that okay? And that was just, that's the kind of communication that I have with the best artists that I've worked with. And, and it's not just Timmy, it's, it's, you know, they're every, you know, when I work with Jim, it's the same way. Um, I, and Ed, you know, they all will come and have questions and, and they're not used to the writer, like go, if you can make it better, make it better, like elevate the story. That's what we're both in. This. We're partners together. Hmm. Um, and and a lot of writers uh, and uh, and I and they're very talented. It's I'm not. This is not a knock. Um, it they, you know, they just want it done their way. Um, and you know, they're challenging the artist to, you know, make like I said to be the architect and build the building, build the best building that you can. Hmm. And I always came from the point of view which was no just take the plans and, and elevate it. And if, if it turns out that it's going to be the empire state building, then fantastic. I, you know, make it whatever you want. Um, and I, I just think it's been a lot of fun for those reasons. And for some reason, I think that enjoyment translates over to the reader. Yes. Uh, because I think that they, I, I would hope that after you read one of the comics that I've done with anybody, um, that, you know, that you put it down and you go, oh, that's a really good read. I had a really good time. I feel like, you know, I mean, let's face it, comics are expensive now. Uh, and if you're going to lay it out, you know, three, four, five bucks for a comic, I I'm hoping to give you a ride. I'm hoping that you're going to have a good time. Because I, I was one of those guys that, you know, went to the store and bought comics every single week. And, you know, you buy 10 of them and... Yeah three would be great and three would be good. And three, I would just like throw across the room. Like, <laughs> well, thanks guys for wasting my time. Um, but I knew that those guys were not, that nobody sets out to make a bad comic or a bad TV show or a bad movie. They just don't. They're, they're pouring their heart in on it. And for whatever reason, it's not connecting. And I, I think without, I, this is going to sound terrible. I always hate talking about myself because I feel like I'm Thomas Edison and I invented the light bulb. <laughs> no. um, I, you know, I just, I just like telling stories and I, and I hope that people like them. Uh, and I've been very lucky that most of the time people do. And it's when fans come up to me, it shows like the best thing that they can say to me is, is that this is the comic that got me back reading Batman or this is the comic that's that I love Batman and this is my favorite Batman story or I you know my son or my daughter never used to watch you know superhero shows and we started watching S.H.I.E.L.D. together and now that's our favorite show and we watch that all the time like those kinds of things I always have the same response which is which is thank you you know, I think they expect me to say, you're welcome. I, like, I, I say thank you because without you, you doing what you do, which is enjoying it, which is coming back every week, which is buying the book, that's how I get to do my job. Uh, you know, because if people stopped doing that, you know, Marvel, DC, this Netflix, any of those people would go, yeah, no one watches your shows. So we're not doing that anymore. Uh, and I just, you know, it's been a, an incredibly long run. I mean, I've been doing this for more than 30 years. Um, and and to be able to say, this is all I've ever wanted to do. And all I've done, really. I, I, the only other job I've had is a bartender. Uh, and... <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> and even that, you're sort of, you're sort of a, spar, a storyteller when you're a bartender, too. Uh, and, you know, I don't know that everybody gets that chance. You know, I mean, I look at you and I look how cool your studio is and all the things <laughs> and your stickers and everything. 
I mean, you just must be in heaven. Like, it's like you get to do the thing you want to do. And and you know what? Uh, I do this and I'm a musician. I'm, I'm in a death metal band, which isn't for everybody. Cool. But let me tell you, yeah. this, is, this is how weird my week has been. I wrote, well, my band wrote a song that was heavily inspired by your Batman work. Oh, thank you. And we just recorded this song. We made the video for it Tuesday night, and here I am talking to you about. Like I told the boys, I was like, "Man, oh, just put this in." They're like what's? And they're like, "What?" Because I was using like your stuff as a reference for this with the, when we were writing this song. That's I was awesome. going, "Look Thank at this!" You. I was like, "We don't want, we don't want the, we don't want '66 stuff like that's because yeah. I want to brought it to because we are a nerdy death metal man." And I said, "This, yeah. this is what we're we're doing. We're we're attacking." We're, we're doing Batman as something more serious and uh, maybe an exploration of a man who has, I'd say mental illness, I guess, would be. No, I, listen, I I, I've all, I start every story the same way, which yeah. is this is a man who made a promise to rid the city of the evil yes. that took his parents' lives. So that's an impossible task. No yes. one's going to rid the city of the evil that took his parents' lives. Yes. Just It happened. But he decides to put on pajamas and go out there and sort of beat the hell out, out of anybody. He wins more than he loses. Um, but it it's sort of a never-ending battle, which is That's a right. weird thing to put on to him because he, you're you're never going to defeat evil. It's what if in order for there to be good, there's going to be evil in the world. And that's why. I try to tell stories about heroes who are people who who stand up when other people are told to sit down. And and I I really do admire people that are are nurses, doctors, cops, firemen, people that are on the front lines anywhere. Those are real heroes. Those are people that are doing stuff. I'm not doing that. Like I I'm sitting here with my computer writing stories about Batman running around on top of a city. Uh, those people are out there putting their lives on the line so that I can do what I get to do. Yeah. Uh, and so it's this sort of crazy circle of, of real heroes, people who tell stories about heroes, and then people who read stories about heroes and then get inspired to sort of maybe be one of those people that goes out there. And if that happens then that's the real magic of storytelling. And I guess my point was, was uh, thank you for inspiring my Ben. <laughs> thank you. For well, I, 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 I listen, I, I think it goes the other way around. I, I thank you for finding something in my work that inspired you. That's, that's to me is the magic. Like mm. a lot of people, you know, they read comics and put them down and that's it. I mean, you went to another level. You you transformed it into another medium. Um, and that's why when people say to me, when you like when you see the Batman movies, whether it's Chris Nolan or Matt Reeves, and you see, you know, how inspired they are by your work, what's that like? And I'm like, it's amazing. I mean, I'm sitting in a theater filled with people and they're like cheering. And I'm sitting there going, Yeah, I I, I wrote that. Like and and it's it's just amazing. And you know, having and I've been very lucky because people like Chris Nolan and Matt Reeves, who I've known for a long time, yeah, um, have been incredibly open about how my work and the artist's work have influenced them and influenced their films. Because there's a lot of people out there that make movies that are based on other things and never talk about the origin of where it came from. I mean, people have made like movies out of books, like really well-known books. And and I, I see directors and actors talking about the movie they made. And I'm like, well, no, you, <laughs> you, you took something else and made them into that. So, you know, here Chris Nolan, I mean, Chris Nolan wrote the foreword to the absent Batman uh, book, Long Halloween. I was just like, like Chris Nolan has better things to do with his day than say thank you. But it, it's that kind of thing that really makes my job, you know, just impossibly great. 
And uh, I know I've, I've kept you a little while. I'm sorry about that, but if I could, if, have you got another minute for another question? Sure, absolutely. Excellent, because I want to ask you about Commando. Because as I said before, you probably get asked it all the time. Like that movie, I wore out my VHS, mate. Like <laughs> no idea. Like I was, I, I was too young to watch it. <laughs> it was like nine, but mate, it was amazing. Um, you know the original script though, that was different from what was on the screen or did it it, it was it was the the original script is the, it was always this that story it was the story of a man who had been in special forces had his daughter kidnapped he he agreed to go do this assassination he got off the plane uh, and then he had a real ticking clock because as soon as that plane landed and they knew he wasn't on the plane. So he had to go and get her back. Um, in the original, the first pass, it was literally a friend of mine, Stan Brooks, who's really my best friend, um, had introduced me to Gene Simmons of Kiss. And uh, and Gene was starting to be in movies. And so I, we went to lunch and it turns out he's a big comic fan and he actually learned English. He was Israeli and he learned English from reading comics. And so yeah. we went and we had this conversation and, and uh, I had this idea, which was, you know, okay, so the guy's Israeli Mossad and he's living in the United States and suddenly his family gets kidnapped and now he's got to go. It was always the same story. Um, but Gene was, he'd only been in a couple of movies. And I, I think that when he read it, it just looked like, wow, this is a big thing for me to be in. Um, and so sort it of gave his blessing to go and do it. And the, at the time, the big movie was 48 Hours. Uh, and so I really wanted Nick Nolte to be in it with his gut. And like, the idea was this was a guy who'd been in Special Forces like 10 years ago. Mm. Um, and he had given it up because of his family. And so you didn't know whether or not he could actually get his family back. Now, when Arnold got attached to it and we did that rewrite and the movie opens with him carrying a tree down a hill, it's not a question of whether or not he's going to be able to get his family back. It's going to be in about 86 minutes. So it was just a different tone of there was not a real tension as to whether or not he could do it. It was much more about when he was going to do it. Um, and, and it was because it was Arnold and Arnold had come from Terminator. It was a much more violent film, but I think by adding the comedy to it and by adding the one liners that Arnold became famous for, um, it, first of all, it just opened a whole brand new kind of action film that people had never seen before. But secondly, it it became something that was, I think, easier for everybody to have fun with. And and it made Arnold a hero. He'd never been a hero before. Uh, and just, again, another great guy to work with. And, and we just had a lot of fun. Did you write the, uh, did you write the line like, uh, let off some steam, Bennett? Yeah, those are the kinds of things that you wind up coming up with. And <laughs> so, uh, so you have fun. Uh, and the dead tired line. Was it, I can't remember. I should know that one. Yeah. Right. It, incredible. Incredible. Don't disturb my friend. He's dead tired. That's uh, and and the funny part is that character is Gustafson. Uh, and Steve Gustafson was my roommate in college. And so, like, the, all the people that have names in that movie are all, like, guys that I knew that, you know, <laughs> that to this day are, like, like the guy that he drops when he says, uh, remember, Sully, when I said uh, I was going to kill you last? Sully was a guy that was in my fraternity. He was like. <laughs> That's amazing. So, you know, it was just. It was just fun. I, you have to remember, I was 23. Like, who else am I going to write about? <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, mates, that's that's so good. I love it. I love it. But uh, Zoom's Zoom's going to be screaming at me. I had one last question. What are you working on now? What's what's coming uh, up? I, 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 there are some things. They're not in a place where I can talk about them yet. That's how I work. Uh, so I'm sorry to disappoint you on your last question, but uh, <laughs> it'll be great fun. That's all I know. 
All right, keep your secrets, mate. That's all right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> what I'm looking forward to is coming to Australia. I'll be there next weekend. Uh, I'll be in Brisbane, then I'll be in Adelaide, and uh, I can't wait to see everybody. I can't That's wait to see great. you. I can't wait to come well, up, thanks, shake man. your hand, and, uh, mate, it's been an absolute honor. Thank you so much again for hanging out. My pleasure. The show. And we'll have all the links in the show notes to Supernova kicking off. We'll see you soon, Jeff. Take care. Take good care.